Tour de France, the largest annual sporting event, the biggest bike race in the world, watched by pretty much everyone who likes cycling all around the world. But how fast do you actually have to be to complete the Tour de France and to get round the Tour de France? So, obviously, as we know, lots of uh, professionals uh, post their power data, uh, so we can have a little look. So one rider in particular, uh, who's just getting round the Tour de France, he's not, doesn't, his team don't really have many options. He's going for TTs, I guess, but you know, in general, he's just getting round, is Alex Dowsett. So um, he posts all his Strava data, so it's pretty interesting, and we can see the sort of riding that he's been doing. He also posts on Instagram sort of how much uh, training stress he has and everything else. Um, but anyway, recently his um, hours on the bike have obviously been off the chart. Um, so anyway, we'll look at just stage one first, four hours 38, so, you know, decently length, weighted average power, 276, so nothing mental, probably means a normalised of like 290, um, which, you know, on the first day, a lot of amateurs could get around that. I'd say, um, before we just talk about power data, there is obviously some things that you have to have, you have to have mad skills in the descent, mad bunch skills towards the end to make sure that, you know, you don't crash, um, and you also just have to have unbelievable endurance uh, to be able to recover and just like confidence in the bike. So we look at the stage uh, in general, it doesn't look that hard. Average heart rate 130, um, nothing crazy. It's still rolling, um, but you know, the first two and a half hours, 209 watts, very chill. Um, but you'll see like the last 60K, so an hour and a half or 70K, suddenly goes up to 240 and you can look at the heart rate. Heart rate's pretty useful. You can see some of the climbs, um, it really starts to, peak um so you're getting 380 watts for three minutes so nothing crazy does it's a little less than 80 kilos about 76 to 78 i believe um but anyway stage one the end is obviously fast but i'm pretty sure he'd set up by then um but yeah the first stage is hard for sure but it's nothing absolutely off the chart um obviously there's some sections which are hard but, and um he had some big uh, like peak power surges um but then he is a big guy as well um so we look at his peak power curves um, there's nothing off the chart here again, you know, it's, you know, 10 minutes, 370 watts, that's, that's decent, but then you look at what's per kilo and it's, it's 4.64, so again, it's, it's nothing off the chart, so first stage in the Tour de France, could you survive, if you had good bunch skills, you probably could survive, um, we'll then go on to the team time trial, um, so obviously this trial of weighted average power is wrong, um, but if we look at sort of, so, 430 watts or 20 minutes so yeah that's when you're gonna get spat lad um so team time trial for sure that's that's where the pros really stand out um amateurs there's no way you'd be able to keep up with them uh even if you had the power necessarily maybe if you're really strong tt you might be able to this is like the third or fourth stage now third stage sorry um 435 normalized for half an hour um and also the efficiency of riding in the team time trial world tour teams are unbelievable at it so again, I think, you know, stage one, you'd probably survive. Stage two, maybe you'd survive. But team time trial, no way. No way you'd survive. Um, so anyway, then we're going to some hideous stages. Um, sorry about that. Uh, stage eight, I believe it was, um, which Alex Dowsett said was uh, pretty horrible. So again, 300 of weighted average power. So normalized would be a little higher, maybe 315. Uh, five hours, 40 in the saddle, four, which is... That is pretty big. Three over three hundred normalized for close to six hours um, is mad. I'll give him some kudos and um, four thousand meters of elevation. So this is a stage where you know you'd have to be a, a good climber to get around this for sure. Um, would I be able to get around? No one knows. Probably not. Um, so again, three hundred seventy-three watts for um, nineteen minutes, twenty-two k up, six percent gradient. That's that's pretty fast. I think days like this is almost harder because there's no gruppetto. You just have to stay with the bunch as long as possible. So again, you can see this next climb, 400 watts for 12 minutes. Again, 19k an hour of 8% gradient. That's hard. Um, that's when you get spat. Um, again, 24k an hour. This is probably where this is easier. 24k an hour up 5%. That's it's getting easier. And um, you know, it's just constantly rolling these climbs. Um, 350 watts for 15 minutes. Um, I guess this is all sort of like tempo efforts, and then you can see it's it's backed off here. Dallas is probably in the gruppetto now. Um, you know, 300 watts for 18 minutes for Dallas is really like tempo, not that hard for him. 
Um, you can see his threshold is maybe 420, so it's sort of endurance almost for him. Um, so yeah, like this stage would be hard for the average person for sure. Um, so you can see sort of like 10 minutes, 400 watts, um, 5 watts per kilo. Okay, it's not off the chart, but you know, we're talking for a six hour stage, constantly climbing at 5 watts per kilo or so. Um, and you're at stage 8 already. So that's the thing is that individually each stage, not impossible to survive. Like if, you know, a decent climber got lobbed in, um, they, and that, you know, obviously this is the assumption that they had good bunch of skills and stuff stage eight they'd probably just about be able to survive but they'd be going like full gas probably and pretty hard to survive with the rupetto um and then but like if they just raced every day you'd get spat very early on and probably wouldn't survive stage 15 again this is where we're starting to get some proper climbs here um proper proper climbs um we'll go for to the tourmalade first actually because that's the way it's done Again, the tourmalade is on Saturday, uh, the other stage was on the Sunday. So four hours, weight average power 317, normalized more like 330. So again, tough day out, average speed 30k an hour. Um, so, you know, like, I'd say this is more manageable. Like as in, I think if, if you're a decent climber, you probably could hang on a day like this with Dowsett just about. But again, you'd be going a lot, lot deeper than he is. And you'd probably want to be fresh. So the Col de Salur, not really relevant because it's a very fast climb. So 5%. So the first part, it's like 3%. So he's doing 350 watts. They're going 34k an hour. So again, that's not really comparison, a good comparison. But if we look at this last part, see obviously the power is a lot smoother. You know, drafting's a lot less relevant. 16k an hour, 8% gradient, 350 watts. So below 5 watts per kilo, maybe. Again, that's, that's doable, I'd say. Um, for a lot of people like to keep up with that and then the tourmalade again 316 watts 16 kenna that's that's very doable um i think you know if if someone turned up who's a decent climber they'd be able to do that no worries at all um on the first day so i think what i'm trying to say is that in reality each stage is hard for sure there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of bunch skills that you might not be able to see. Um, but it's not, so it's about 4.4 watts per kilo for an hour and 10, so it's not mad, to be honest. Um, it's just the combination of all the stages put together, the length of the stages, um, and just the stress of the bunch, the descending, everything else. Like, it's really more than just the power. Um, so yeah, we'll go back to stage, stage 15. Again, five hours, 20 in a saddle, 314 weights average power, 330 normalized. So you can see like the workload that they're getting on, sort of three to 400 TSS every single day. Um, and the first, what, 10 days, they didn't have a rest day. That's tough. That's really, really tough. Um, the climbs here again, 366 watts for 25 minutes. Um, then got the Port de Lez, um, 316 watts, again, 17K an hour. Upper seven percent gradient, pretty tough. The colder Peguer, or whatever you call the thing. Um, again, eight percent gradient, fifteen k an hour. This last section is really horrible. Twelve percent for the last three kilometers, three hundred and fifty watts, eleven k an hour. Again, probably could just about survive. Prat del Albi, three hundred and five uh, watts for forty four minutes. In comparison, Simon Yates did it in about twenty seven minutes and rode at five point eight watts per kilo. Um, there's data on trading peaks about his win. It's absolutely off the chart. We're now going to go on the time trial where Dowsett did give us some gas. Um, so you'll see here that Dowsett, he got a decent result. I think maybe top 25 or something. Didn't sue him far too heavily for Dowsett, unfortunately. Um, but still, nonetheless, it was a good, good ride from Dowsett. So um, 408 weighted average power, um, which again, you're not going to be able to do. Um, if you're going for the win for the time trial, obviously there's no way as an amateur. Um, but, you know, this first section here, 463 watts up for five minutes. That's very, very solid. Um, 26k an hour for 6% gradient. That's rapid. Um, but again, this isn't about winning. This is all about getting around. So this is the segment, more or less, it's not the whole thing, but you know, it's a decent indication. So generally, you know, to get in a time cut, it was about 39 average, something like that. So you can see Greipel, 372 watts. Carlos Verona, 320. Matthias Frank, 314. So you'll see people are 
getting round on sort of 300 watts ish for half an hour jack haig 316 which he said was about 4.6 watts per kilo for half an hour which again is like you know it's it's not easy to do but it's not impossible like it's not beyond the realms of possibility to get round a tour de france time trial again this is assuming you have good position can stay in the position to send well and have all the good kit so it isn't like if you just got given the world tour bike you know you're training normally uh like let's say you're just training for the Tour de France and they're like, but just for one stage, you can get around that. But obviously this is like stage, what was it, 16 or something? I mean, it was a, um, no, it would have been at stage 14, sorry. Um, it's very, like, it's hard because you're so far in, you've had so much training stress. And I think that's the difference really um, between the pros and the amateurs is that one day the Tour de France, you'd get around for sure. For sure, I, I, I back a lot of people I know to get around a Tour de France. I reckon I'd be able to get around one or two stages, um, even some of the hillier ones. Um, I reckon I could get around if I like bunch skill, bunch handling was good, descending was good, and the pace wasn't absolutely off the chart. Um, I might be able to get around. But again, it'll be me going absolutely full gas to literally get around one stage. Um, and even then, I'm not 100% sure I could. But the flat stages definitely are chill until like the last... 60k and then it's just full gas and i think you probably get spat but you'd still get in the time cut so could you get around the tour de france probably not unless you're like decent domestic pro already and a very strong climber um but you know could you get around the stage yeah could you get around the tt if you're good stuff yeah probably could you get around the team time trail no um but yeah we'll see the alps are coming there's going to be some very very hard stages there and um the time cut's going to be hard uh, but anyway just watching hope you did enjoy this video do you reckon you can get around a tour de france stage do you reckon you get around the whole thing we're gonna get spat out about five minutes um anyway cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next one